ഫസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ഓൾ താങ്ക്സ് ടു ഐ എസ് എ തൃശ്ശൂർ സിറ്റി ബ്രാഞ്ച് ആൻഡ് തൃശ്ശൂർ മെഡിക്കൽ കോളേജ് അനസ്റ്റിഷ്യ ടീം ഫോർ ഗിവിംഗ് അസ് ദിസ് ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റി സിംഗിൾ റെസ്ക്യൂ ഓർ സി പി ആർ ഇഫ് യു ആർ അലോൺ ഇൻഷ്യൂർ ദ സീൻ ഇസ് സേഫ് ആൻഡ് ചെക്ക് റെസ്പോൺസ് ബൈ ടാപ്പിംഗ് ഓൺ ബോത്ത് ഷോൾഡേഴ്സ് ഫ്രം ഫ്രണ്ട് ആൻഡ് ആസ്കിംഗ് ലൗഡ്ലി ഹലോ ആർ യു ആൾ റൈറ്റ് ഇഫ് ദർ ഇസ് നോ റെസ്പോൺസ് കോൾ ഫോർ ഹെൽപ്പ് ആൻഡ് സെൻഡ് സംബി ടു ഗെറ്റ് എൻ എ ഇ ഡി ഓർ ആസ്ക് ഫോർ ഇറ്റ് ത്രൂ മോബൽ ദൻ ചെക്ക് ഫോർ ബ്രീതിംഗ് വാൾ പാൽപേറ്റിംഗ് കറാഡ് പോൾസ് ഇറ്റ് ഷുഡ് ടേക്ക് ഫൈവ് സെക്കൻഡ്സ് ബട്ട് നോട്ട് മോർ ദൻ ടെൻ സെക്കൻഡ്സ് ഇഫ് ദർ ഇസ് നോ കറാഡ് പോൾസ് ആൻഡ് നോർമൽ ബ്രീതിംഗ് സ്റ്റാർട്ട് സൈക്കിൾസ് ഓഫ് തേർട്ടി ചെസ്റ്റ് കംപ്രഷൻസ് ആൻഡ് ടു ബ്രെഡ്സ് കംപ്രസ് അറ്റ് ദ സെൻറ്റർ ഓഫ് ചെസ്റ്റ് അറ്റ് ലീസ്റ്റ് ഫൈവ് സെൻറ്റിമീറ്റർസ് ബട്ട് നോട്ട് മോർ ദൻ സിക്സ് സെൻറ്റിമീറ്റർസ് at a rate of 120 per minute and allow complete recoil between compressions without lifting hand and without leaning onto the chest count loudly 1 2 3 up to 30 after 30 chest compressions two breaths with or without a barrier device or using a pocket mask one inhalation for one second one second for exhalation and then the next inhalation visible chest rise will be adequate after second breath 30 chest compressions are continued after 5 cycles of 30 compression and 2 breathing again look for carotid pulse for 5 to 10 seconds and if no pulse the cycles are repeated if there are two persons one can give chest compressions and the other person can give artificial breathing with bag and mask after 5 cycles persons are interchanged this slide i could this is in an actual what is c1 person cpr two person cpr aed etc will discuss at the end and the defibrillator will be discussed by paul in the end cpr cpr is the treatment for cardiac arrest cardiac arrest can occur to anybody at any time so every person should be have should have some knowledge about cpr cardio pulmonary resuscitation they should be trained according to their standard so that is why we say every citizen a life saver being healthcare workers you must be able to do cpr in all situation and you should be able to teach others what is cpr this we used to see in every day if timely resuscitation is given many uh, lives can be saved that is the importance of cpr and that is the importance of teaching cpr to each and every person as you know brain and heart are two vital organs if three minutes blood uh, heart is continuously functioning 24 hours a day and seven seven uh, days in a week if it stop for three minutes blood supply to the brain will be stopped and it will be lead to loss of consciousness and if it lasts for 10 minutes ir- irreversible damage can occur to prevent that that is the aim of cpr i am not going to the details of this one but what are the causes of loss of sudden loss of consciousness you must it may be due to cardiac causes in cardiac causes you must uh, know what are the difference between cardiac arrest and heart attack that or, or myocardial infarction cardiac arrest is a uh, div, uh, 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 f- failure of the conducting system you have an el- elaborate discussion on conducting system sa node av node etc if that system is going uh, da- uh, have some damage the ca- cardiac arrest can occur in that condition there is blood in the heart blood is oxygenated what is loss there is no pumping action we have to provide pumping action that is the importance of cardiac uh, arrest and chest compression on the other hand in heart attack or myocardial infarction it is a disease of the uh, 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 circulatory system of the heart this is uh, a blockage or spasm of coronary arteries in that case there may be symptoms there we may get time but in cardiac arrest that is due to conducting system there is no time immediate action to be taken the other conditions i am not going to detail because all of, because of, due to lack of time so cpr started in 1960 cpr program was started in 1960 by american heart association and indian resuscitation guidelines that was published only in 2017 you may be have heard of uh, ilcor international liaison committee on resuscitation this society gives instru- uh, guidelines every five year we are following the last guideline that is 2020 guidelines a 
according to indian restoration council there are three guidelines there is one compression only life support that is for lay person and basic cardiopulmonary life support for medics and paramedic outside the hospital and comprehensive cardiopulmonary life support that is for medics and paramedic inside the hospital due to talk shortage of time i am not going to compression only life support basic parts of basic cardiopulmonary support uh, restoration only we are discussing these are the gu guidelines there are four links in the basic cardiopulmonary life support there is early recognition early high quality cpr early defibrillation and early transfer this is the exact algorithm of basic, basic cardiopulmonary life support we can briefly discuss what is that yeah, these are the uh, core links early recognition and activation early high quality cpr early defibrillation and early transfer to a center so when should we start cpr basic life support you observe a person suddenly collapsing in front of you or somebody is already collapsed when you saw him first or you have arrived a scene where a lay person is giving cpr what will you do when you come to a scene of sudden loss of consciousness first you should see the scene is safe for the victim as well as for you don't jump into a disastrous condition let like in these conditions if you are jump into the situation one per, in the last one the person is uh, on a uh, high power line the uh, if you are entering into a uh, burning house or car you may also be caught in damage so first and foremost lesson is ensure scene safety only then you enter the scene then what should you do anusha next step is uh, you must assess how much uh, what is the level of consciousness for that what you do you should tap on both shoulder and ask loudly are you okay so uh, hello are you okay and you are observing for whether there is any purposeful movement so tap on both shoulder and ask loudly how are you okay, uh, okay in a language he can understand the, you don't shake the victim sometimes there may be injury to spinal, spinal cord shaking may produce, produce more damage to spinal cord so two outcome can occur once the victim may be responsive and in that case they keep him in recovery position and uh, try to get the medical help on the other hand if the victim is unresponsive you call for, if you are alone you call for help how can you call if there is a phone you can utilize that otherwise what are the emergency number you must know 108 is the emergency number now 112 is the pan india emergency number you call this or if you have got a mobile phone you put it in speaker mode and call for help through that phone and don't lose time next step is check for breathing while palpating carotid pulse that is can show how uh, this should take 10 second but not more than this should take 5 seconds but not more than 10 seconds how to check carotid pulse then uh, you can feel uh, locate thyroid prominence of trachea then shift to the groove between the trachea and the muscle and palpate for carotid pulse you can uh, count 1000 1001 1002 1003 1, etc up to 1000 this is for uh, noting the time so so 1001 this one second so you, you can send uh, see lateral side put the hand on uh, trachea slip into the groove between them and count uh, for pulse you should take uh, five seconds but not more than seven 10 seconds at the same time you should watch the respiration also this should take uh, five seconds not more than 10 seconds so three outcome outcome can occur what are the outcomes first condition the patient may be uh, the victim may, is already unconscious the victim may be uh, uh, having a pulse and respiration in that case watch the patient and we possible put him in a lateral position what is the advantage of lateral position the aspiration is chance of aspiration is less more or less there is airway management you have a discussion on airway management it is airway airway is more uh, protected in the lateral position then uh, in the second condition there is uh, abnormal or no breathing but there is a definite pulse in that condition you give artificial respiration you had Uh, elaborate discussion on artificial respiration in the, uh, previously 
Anyway, and a third situation, that is no pulse, no respiration. You should start initiate uh, CPR, high quality CPR. So, uh, in the first situation, that is, the patient, victim is unconscious, but there is uh, 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 no, uh, uh, there is pulse and respiration. In that case, we, the victim should be in the lateral position. This is the lateral position, the head is tilted uh, slightly backwards. In that case, airway is maintained, then there is less chance for aspiration. And then second, second condition, that is, there is no respiration, but there is pulse. In that case, artificial respiration should be given. How to give? There are two steps in artificial respiration. First step is open the airway, and the next step is provide breath. How to open the airway? Opening the airway. You may, may have heard of triple maneuver. It will be shown. I shall show you here also. Uh, head tilt, chin lift. Head, head tilt with one hand, chin lift. And uh, if the, in that case, in that case, the airway is opened. So, uh, here the uh, airway is obstructed, but the simple maneuver, the airway is open. Now, if there is a suspected uh, head injury, uh, cervical spine injury, it is jaw thrust. Uh, he is showing how to jaw, uh, show. If there is another person, he can protect the cervical spine. Now, yeah, if the air, even after protecting the airway, maintaining the airway, if there is not adequate respiration, artificial breath should be, should be given. How to give artificial breath? There are different methods, mouth-to-mouth -mouth respiration, mouth-to-mouth -mouth respiration, or mouth -to -mouth. how to give mouth-to-mouth -mouth respiration? Stand on one side of the victim, take a deep breath, then head, maintain head till chin lift, make, make a tight seal, This is the method, but it may not. There are different, uh, difficult, certain, certain problem. The, there is chance of infection. There sometimes the victim may be vomiting. Aspir uh, blood, there is blood, etc. In that condition, if you are, cannot give uh, artificial respiration, you need not give. Other, then, uh, then other method is uh, with. Uh, you can use a pocket mask. You can show the pocket mask there. There is a pocket mask. This is pocket mask. You can use pocket mask. In this pocket mask and mouth-to-mouth -mouth respiration, you are standing on one side, then you can give pocket mask. There is chance of infection. That can be reduced. But in both situations, we are give artificial respiration. We are give uh, expired air. Expired air is, uh, oxygen in expired air is less than atmospheric air. You know that. And other method is, uh, what is other method? Using a self-inflating bag, ambu bag. That I shall show you later. And you had a discussion on ammo back previously. So, uh, then give one breath through the pocket mask, one second for inspiration. Uh, then the, what is the rate of inspiration? 12 breaths per minute. That is, you can count one breath, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004 breath. That is uh, 12 breaths per minute. That is the rate of respiration in respiratory failure. And in this is a barrier device. If you are using mouth-to-mouth -mouth respiration, there is chance of infection. There are commercially available barrier devices are there. They can be used to reduce chance of infection. Then this is the method of uh, giving po uh, artificial respiration for pocket mask, maintain the airway, then holding the method you have shown, then to, uh, give breath. This is also, uh, we are giving expired air. Now, the third condition, that is, uh, there is no respiration, no breathing. In that condition, high quality CPR should be started. How to give high PPR, high CPR? 30 chest compression in one set. It may take ago 15 seconds. And after that, two breaths. Each breath over one second, then one second for expiration, and one second, uh, the, the second breath. And start compression. We can show that. Uh, how to uh, identify the, uh, what is the position of the uh, 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 ideal position? That is, the, we keep one finger below the lower part of the chest, two finger above that, inger digitated finger, and give chest compression. What is the ideal position? Our chest should be above the level of the, uh, 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 our waist should be above the level of the chest. If your victim is on, stand, uh, stand on the bed, that is the position, you can stand. Otherwise, if the victim is on the floor, we have to kneel on the side of the victim. And 
Keep, keep two fingers above the lower part of the sternum, two fingers above that, keep the heel of the hand, the other hand is placed, and give compression. One, two, three, four, etc. That is the method of chest compression. Count loudly. One, two, three, four, five, yes. Okay. This is the ideal position. Elbow should be straight, fingers should be uh, interlocked, and uh, elbow should be straight, and shoulder should be above the level of the chest. That is the ideal position of your position, rescuer's position. Then you should uh, count, uh, take some steps. That is, chant count loudly one, two, three, etc., up to 30. Then it may take about, uh, what is the rate of compression? Just at least 120 per minute. That is, one second, uh, in two compression in one second. Or 30 chest compression may take 15 seconds. Then, what is the depth of compression? At least just uh, 5 centimeter, but not more than 6 centimeter in an adult. Then, come, there should be complete recoil of the chest. Do not just, once you start the chest compression, do not start uh, just stop chest compression unnecessarily. Then if there are more than one person, after 30 chest compression, that is uh, after five, five cycle, 50 into two, uh, 50 into two, uh, 50, 30 chest compression, two breaths, that is one cycle. After five cycle, interchange, just, uh, the person who gives chest compression should be changed. That is the principle. Then you can start. One, one. You can give chest compression. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. Two, thirty. Then two breath. Give two breath. One breath. Two breath. Then again two chest compression. At the end of the thirty into uh, five cycle, that is thirty chest compression and two cycle. At the end of uh, uh, five cycle, the person giving uh, chest compression should be changed. He may be tired. If you are tired, what is the complication? The uh, chest compression, compression may not be adequate. In that case, the uh, uh, circulation may be inadequate. Yes. Okay. So after 30 chest compression, two breaths should be given. If, there, uh, if you are alone, you use either pocket mask or mouth-to-mouth uh, -mouth respiration for giving uh, artificial respiration. Mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, uh, with or barrier, with or barrier device, mouth-to-mouth uh, -mouth respiration. Do not interrupt chest compression. If, the, uh, if you, uh, you give uh, one breath, you are sure it is not adequate. Then you give two breaths. Uh, after that, you start chest compression. Not, uh, don't try for a third respiration. That is the way. After 30 chest compression, two breaths. Then again 30 chest compression. For three chest compression, you may take three seconds. That is one, uh, uh, one breath in one second, then expiration one second, then third, one or three, third sub. Visible endpoint, visible chest rise. That is the normal tidal volume breath. That is the adequate. So after 30 chest compression, you feel for the carotid pulse again. That also takes less, uh, less than 10 seconds. Then if there is pulse, you can watch for respiration. If there is respiration, you can go for uh, recovery position. Then, on the other hand, if there is no pulse, then we have to uh, repeat the 30 seconds and two breath continuously. This should be continued till AED or defibrillator arrives. So this is one person CPR. That is, if you are alone, you give 30 chest compression, two breath, either uh, mouth to mouth or a pocket mask. Then if uh, a, a second person, by that time, if a second person come with an AED and a ambu bag, manual resuscitator, then the next respiration should be as per the, uh, using an AED, uh, you, uh, ambu bag. If you are using ambu bag, how to use an ambu bag? You had a demonstration before. Anyway, this is ambu bag. Ambu. It has got a reservoir bag. Then, then this is the CE method of holding. Have had this had discussion. Then that is this should be continued till AED arrive. Paul will discuss how defibrillation is given and what should be done with an AED. That Paul will be discussing. You would all uh, would have heard about. Uh, two of the words, two of the words like that is about uh, defibrillate. Yeah, this is a common thing what we hear and also something called cardio word. So these two, uh, I will be uh, discussing on that. So I'll start with the defibrillation, then the cardio version. So defibrillation, you know, uh, it is to give, give a shock, give a shock to stop the abnormal uh, rhythm. Many of us think it is not to it is to stimulate the heart, it is not to stimulate the heart. 
it is stop and it is unsynchronized shock it is not synchronized it is unsynchronized so what do you mean by unsynchronized so this is the normal ecg what do you see uh, on the uh, on the screen and that is the p wave the qrs and the t so if you if you are defibrillating it will you, it will fall anywhere on the cardiac cycle it doesn't uh, fall on one place it can be on p it can be on r and it can be on t so in synchronized uh, shock that is when you do cardioversion it will be uh, on the peak of the r wave it will give only at the peak of the r wave so that is the difference between unsynchronized shock and synchronized shock so synchronized shock is cardioversion that is called uh, cardioversion and you need less of the less of the current and it is for the treatment of tachyarrhythmias so it has a sensor it has a sensor to deliver the shock it synchronized with the peak of the r wave that's the peak of the r wave otherwise if it falls on t t is this one it can cause ventricular fibrillation so this is the, the uh, this is a button that is the sync button you have to press the sync button during that time so you can see it clearly the sync button i will show on the, the machine also the same so when you when you uh, when you, when you synchronize this will be the situation there will be sensors on the r wave and the current will be given at the r wave so coming back to the defibrillation it is unsynchronized shock and it is for the treatment of life threatening cardiac arrhythmias so what are the cardiac arrhythmias which can come and that is the dreadful uh, the one that is ventricular fibrillation if you give a if you give a shock to a child what he draws uh, will be ventricular fibrillation it doesn't have any morphology at all and the second thing is monomorphic vt or a polymorphic vt without the pulse these two are the shockable rhythms so you are giving defibrillation for these rhythms and there are different type of uh, defibrillators so defibrillators are the one you to give given for shock it can be manual external defibrillator see what you see is an external defibrillator where you have to identify what is the rhythm on that you have to know whether it is a shockable or non shockable and then you will have to decide and give so you should have you need to have a good knowledge about this so this is called aed that is automated external defibrillator what does it do it identifies the rhythm which needs a shock and it will prompt you to give a shock so it will prompt you it, it will tell you this is shockable rhythm and give uh, and uh, give a shock so um, so that is an aed what do you see if you switch it on the, you can see what happens it is giving voice prompts it is telling you it, it to uh, the shock or not to shock okay that's enough that's enough and see the modern machine has both this together if you look at so the the modern defibrillators has both together on that see it's a manual defibrillator as well as aed both are there if you turn to one side it becomes manual defibrillator if it turns the other side it it is the aed so this can be this very portable also it can be kept on the mesh, on on the cot and it can be shifted see any anyone uh, can identify what is it anyone from the crowd dot can identify this internal internal one how much joules we will give for internal one so it is very less joules it is 10 to 20 joules so i'll show you those who doesn't know about it it is to it is manual internal defibrillator and it is to defibrillate the heart internally so you are opening when you open so just so you can see heart is been uh, uh, massaged heart massage then the internal defibrillator is applied uh, for ventricular defibrillation ventricular fibrillation and once it is applied you can see a rhythmic movement of the heart so that is internal manual internal defibrillator 
So when you're coming to the defibrillator, you should know whether it is monophasic or biphasic. How do you know it is monophasic? You know it is monophasic because the current flows one from one direction only. Current forwards in one direction. So it is called monophasic. So you need more of the energy for this. And by, by the way, if the biphasic, the current flows in two direction. So the, the, uh, the joules what is required to suppress an arrhythmia, it is less with biphasic because you need to give less of the current and for monophasic it is, uh, if it is more. And also they say that the first success rate with biphasic, it is 90%. When it's compared with uh, monophasic, it is only 60%. And it causes less of the trauma or injury. Uh, the power battery, what is required is less. And it is, it, it is less painful and the skin burns are less. So we have biphasic. So when you see one uh, defibrillator, you should know whether it's a monophasic and biphasic. The earlier ones, what we see here, this is BPL, the maximum. See the maximum energy, how much it is. It, it is 360, what is mentioned here. And for the biphasic, if you look at it, it is 200 here. So this, is, this was the way we were, uh, uh, we were identifying whether it is a biphasic or a monophasic. But the latest machine which has come, this is what we are using uh, at, our, at our hospital. If you look at it, there is 270 joules in here. So you cannot identify by this. So you have to always be fam familiar with your machine, see what, is the, uh, uh, see what is the literature given in that, Always keep the literature with the crash cut so that if you are, if a new person come in, he'll be able to know whether it is a biphasic or monophasic. So for defibrillation, monophasic it is 360 and biphasic it is 200. You all know that it can be, the, the shock can be given by paddle. As, uh, this is the paddle, uh, the, how we are giving it. And also through, through pads. There are pediatric pads and um, adult pads. Uh, these are adhesive pads. Adhesive pads are much better than the, the, uh, than the paddles because you can save time while the, you can do the chest compression during that time when it is fixed. So, and the better energy is passed through if it is adhesive pads. It is very easy, you can see from that. And where will you apply it? It's the right side of the chest and right side of the uh, sternum below the clavicle, that is one. The other one, it's the apex, well below the well, well below the armpit. So that is the usual position. But in children, you are putting it anterior posterior. Why anterior posterior? Because they should not touch each other. So for the small child, we are putting anterior posterior. And this is anterior lateral. This is the commonest position you use. So if you are using a pads, if you are using a pads, then uh, the charge will be on the machine, what you are seeing here. And if you are using a paddle, the charging is this yellow, yellow thing, what you see here. So the, it, and it will be only on one of the paddle, that is the apex paddle. So the charge will be there. And uh, let us go through the steps. What are the things? It is a power on, attach the pads and the paddles, either the pads or the paddles, then clear and analyze the rhythm. You are doing the chest compression. You have to stop to analyze. Otherwise, the machine will think, if it, you are using an AED, the machine will think that it is a normal, uh, it is a normal pulse and it will say it is non-shockable. Then you have to select the energy. If it is monophasic, it is 360, biphasic is 200, but if it is AED, it is auto-selected. Then you have to charge, then you have to shock after clearing, you don't, no one should test. So this is a, just a video so that you will be able to understand. So you see, he has uh, 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 turned to 200, then he's applying gel on that because to prevent the burns, you should apply gel, enough gel on that, and he's using a paddle. And the other person is continuing the compression, then he is charging. That's the charge button, you can charge it at, on the paddle also. Then he's going to so he's placing that at the right sternum, the one, the other one at the apex. Then he's clearing, you have, you do not touch the patient and uh, the, you should do uh, defibrillation. So 
So the uh, take home message what I have uh, it is that defibrillation is the delivery of unsynchronized shock which has to be which is for the treatment of pulseless uh, ventricular tachycardia that's cardiac arrest uh, rhythms and ventricular fibrillation cardioversion is synchronizing the current and giving and you are giving a low energy and it is for unstable tachycardia. Uh, uh, and one more thing actually just to uh, mention you these are the rhythms what you find what you see that is uh, for the unstable tachycardia that's atrial fibrillation what you're seeing and what uh, you see the QRS complex are not regular and these are the fibrillatory waves what you're seeing so that is atrial fibrillation what you see nest is atrial flutter the typical sore tooth appearance you can see and uh, supraventricular tachycardia, the rates will be very high, more than 216, you won't see the P wave in that. Monomorphic VT, it is a wide QRS with, uh, uh, with all, the, uh, all the, uh, the QRS are of the same shape, that is called monomorphic and that is the polymorphic, it is irregular. So these are the rhythms which will be used. And uh, I, uh, I will demonstrate the, this thing. Can you focus on that uh, defibrillator? So you can see the defibrillator now, and you can see the paddles. See, this is the, if I turn here, you can see the monitor. If I turn to, to the left, it is the monitor is on. If I turn to one, it is manual defibrillator. If I turn to the opposite side, it is AED. It is, it's giving voice prompts. So you can use all this in one machine. So I'm putting into a monitor and then to manual defibrillator. Then you can charge. You can charge. You can charge on to, uh, if you're using the paddles, you can see this yellow button. That is the charge. But on the other one, you won't see that. So it will be only on one machine and on one paddle. And you can see the shock button on both of this. So if you are using a paddles instead of a uh, uh, pad, uh, 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 if you are using pads instead of paddles, you can see the charge button on this and the shock button. So what you have to do is, now this is the maximum what is seen here, that is 200 joules is selected, so it's a bi biphasic one. So you can see the 200, the maximum in that, then you charge, either you charge from here or from there, so you can charge from here. Now, once it is charged, the uh, shock button will be blinking, and you can use on the place where we uh, I have told you, one on the right of the uh, right of the sternum below the clavicle, and the other one at the apex. After that, you see to that we are not touching the patient. No one is touching the patient. Oxygen is not passing uh, in that pathway, and you say clear and tell shock in one, two, three, shock. So that, that, that's how you do the shock uh, with the paddles. Immediately after this, you should start your defibrillation. In cardioversion, it is for unstable tachycardias. You are always synchronizing the button uh, on the machine. You have to press the sync button and do. So these are the differences. And uh, I hope uh, all of you would have understood. And there is a, there, there is a room where uh, the CPR mannequins are kept and you can, uh, those who are interested can go and practice on that. So for pediatric, what, what is being shown here, it is uh, adult, adult paddle uh, as well as a pediatric paddle. So if you are removing from that, it, be, it turns to be the pediatric one. If you are using pediatric, so if you are, uh, if you are uh, using manual one, two to four joules per kg. That is, uh, that, uh, that is what is recommended, two to four joules per kg. If you are using for adult, it is monophasic you are using, it is 360, and biphasic, it is 200. If you are using a cardio version, you are using a low energy, you are using for conscious patient, so you, the energy what is given is also less. So if it is atrial fibrillation is two, uh, 120 to 200 joules, if it is SVT, atrial flutter, which I was shown, it needs very less current. It is 50 to 100. And if for monomorphic VT, that's a wide QRS complex, you need 100 joules. It's very easy to remember, 50 to 100 joules, 100 joules, and 200 joules. You have any questions you can ask? 
If you don't have anything, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for the patient listening. And thank you, Sashi sir, the whole team uh, for cooperating and also the audio visual team. Thank you.